Hello everyone, welcome back to the Outpost. Do you dream of a way to block ads across all devices on your network? Would you love to kill trackers and stop your devices from sending your data back to their company servers? You are in luck. Today I'm going to cover a cool little project for anyone interested in improving their home network security and privacy. A Pi-hole DNS service. Now some of the terms and topics covered today may sound a little foreign and complicated, but just follow along and you'll be up and running in no time. So what is a DNS service and why might you want to set one up on your own? You can think of a domain name server or DNS as the phone book of the internet. The human brain can recall words easily like google.com or amazon.com but our computers use IP addresses, and you can't really expect people to remember a bunch of number strings when trying to navigate the web. A DNS stores those addresses so you can navigate the web easily. However, because of this function and how the internet works, this also lets big companies like Google, who happen to run commonly used DNS services, see where you go and collect your data. When you run your own DNS for your entire network, you're able to easily control the data flow for all your connected devices. Additionally, because DNS functions kind of like a phone book, you are able to block traffic you don't really want at the source. This means blocking ads, consumer data gathered by Internet of Things devices, and etc. So a pie hole has the added benefit of improving your browsing experience and even speeding things up. Let's get started. Raspberry Pis are basically entire computers in a tiny form factor, and they have models covering a large span of performance ranges. The Pi Hole system we are setting up today is very lightweight and can be run on very efficient Raspberry Pi hardware such as this Raspberry Pi 3, but you can even use a Pi Zero for this project. Since this system will be running 24-7, we want it to be as energy efficient as possible and these low power pies also tend to be relatively inexpensive. So, what we have here today is a Raspberry Pi 3, some heat sinks, a Raspberry Pi case, a micro USB power supply, a micro SD card, and a micro SD card USB adapter. I'm also using a Windows 11 PC for running the imaging utility, but you can also use Mac or Linux. We'll begin by downloading the Raspberry Pi Imaging Utility. This tool helps us easily install operating systems on micro SD cards for our Pi. And we can download it directly from the Raspberry Pi organization. After we run the Imaging Utility, we see a few options. First, select the Raspberry device we will be using the image in. In our case, Raspberry Pi 3. Next, we choose the operating system. First, click on the Raspberry Pi OS Other. Then we'll choose the Raspberry Pi OS Lite, 32-bit, as it's lightweight and perfect for our needs. Then for storage, we will select our micro SD card. Depending on your computer, there really shouldn't be too many options, so it should be easy to find. Just make sure everything matches up, like disk size, etc. Make sure to configure the customizable options before you start imaging. Press Ctrl Shift X to bring up the menu. Under the General tab for Set Host Name, Enter something that will let you easily identify this particular device, such as Pi 3 Pi Hole. Set your username and password, and use something secure that you will also remember. For the demo, I'm going to use User User. Check the box for Configure Wireless LAN, and enter the values for the Wi-Fi network you want to connect to your home Wi-Fi. By using a Raspberry Pi with built-in Wi-Fi, 
and configuring the network as part of the imaging process, we can ensure that our Pi will connect to our network on first boot without having to worry about network cables. Make sure to set locale settings and make sure that matches your location. Switch over to Services tab at the top and enable SSH by clicking on the box. This will allow us to log into the device and install Pi-hole once we assemble the Pi and boot it up. Password authentication is fine for our purposes, but it is worth noting that this will use the username and password we just set under the general tab. So that's why it's important to remember what we put there. For the options tab, we will just leave the default selection. Click save and start the imaging process. Once the OS is written to the micro SD card, remove it from the computer, insert the newly imaged micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi, Give it a few minutes to finish booting, and you'll be able to find the Pi's IP address on your network. An easy way is to locate it through your router's admin page. Next, we connect to the Pi via Secure Shell, or SSH, from a computer on the same network. Any SSH utility will work for this. But for the demo, I'm going to be using PuTTY. I figure that if you are watching this demo, you probably have a Windows computer. But you can easily do this on a Mac or a Linux computer, or even from your phone. On Windows, you can download PuTTY from PuTTY.org. Select the 64-bit x86 option. This will download PuTTY. And then double-click the download installer file. The install application should open, and just go through the process with the default settings. Once installed, open PuTTY. Under Host Name or IP Address, enter the IP address for your Raspberry Pi and click Open. This will open a new terminal window, and you will have to log in using your username and password. Now that we are logged in, we are ready to install PiHole. Okay, we are at the terminal. Simply run this command. Follow the on-screen instructions to configure your network settings. We will stick with the default settings at this time, and PiHole will be configured to use its default block list. The default block list works very well and really shouldn't interfere with normal web browsing. There are a lot of other block lists available, and you can easily add them after setup is complete. Just keep in mind, more aggressive block lists run a higher risk of interfering with device functions on your network. I would definitely recommend running the default block list for a while, especially if you are new to this. Once setup is complete, you will be provided with an admin password for the PiHole's web interface. Write this password down, take a picture with your phone, screenshot it, anything. This is crucial for accessing the dashboard where you can manage your DNS settings and view network statistics. You will now close the PuTTY client and open a web browser. Enter in the IP address for your Raspberry Pi followed by forward slash admin. This will bring up the login page for the Pi Hole service. Enter in your password and log in. In the admin portal, we can configure a whole slew of options as well as monitor the activity of our Pi Hole. First, we will change our upstream DNS provider. 
This is the service Pi-hole will use to resolve websites that aren't on the block list. There are several privacy-focused options available, and you can read more about them at Pi-hole's documentation at the following website. I am going to select the custom option and enter the following IP address to use 208.67.222.123 and 208.67.220.123. This will have Pi-hole use OpenDNS Family Shield which blocks pornographic content, as well as some phishing and malware. Once configured, click Save, and we should be good to go. Finally, we have to configure our router to utilize our new DNS on our network. Each router will be a little different, but the general steps will be the same. So again, log into your router's admin portal and find the DNS settings. I have an ASUS router, and the settings I'm looking for are under the WAN page for Wide Area Network. Select DNS, and you should see entries for a primary and secondary DNS. I run two Pi holes, so I have a little redundancy, but if you only have one, enter it in the primary slot. Now, just to be clear, if the Pi hole is your only DNS entered here, and the Raspberry Pi goes down for whatever reason, your internet access will also go down. This is why it's a good idea to run a second Pi hole DNS. Another option, if this freaks you out a little bit, is to enter the IP of your preferred upstream DNS from the previous step for secondary DNS. In our case, 208.67.222.123 This will still give you the benefits of using that DNS service, but it won't be able to make use of the block list on the Pi hole. As I previously mentioned, Pi hole works by blocking requests to known ad and tracking servers. This not only speeds up your browsing, but also enhances your privacy and security by preventing unwanted content and data collection. Once everything is configured, hit save, and your new Pi hole should be up and running on your home network. As with all things tech, it's a good idea to regularly update your Pi hole's block lists and keep your Raspberry Pi OS updated as well. But that being said, I am terrible at this. If things are working, I usually don't mess with it. But in this case, it really isn't too bad. Just use PuTTY to log into your device over Secure Shell and run the command pihole-up. Also, consider setting up a static IP address for your pihole to avoid issues with IP changes. This really shouldn't be an issue but you can set a static IP address for your device using your router's admin portal. And here are some screenshots of my two Pi hole devices running on my local network. As you can see, while a lot of traffic gets through, a lot is also blocked. Primarily, this is traffic from Internet of Things devices like smart TVs but I have had it catch and block malicious traffic from a Chinese Android TV box. You never really know what it might catch. And that's it. You now have a powerful tool in your home network fighting against ads and trackers. Be sure to subscribe to The Outpost for more tutorials like this one. Drop your questions and experiences in the comments below. See you next time.